Over the course of 17 episodes, I built a giant Wild West themed area in Benny's Movie Park 2 and it's finally finished. Featuring two fully themed roller coasters, river rapids that go underground, a super detailed western landscape filled with vegetation and architecture, and even some themed flat rides. Today I'll show you everything I built because this trip to the Grand Banyan has plenty more to offer just below the surface. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this brand new and special episode of Building Benny's Movie Park 2. Today we're actually not building because I'm showing you the entire western area because believe it or not, it's actually, it's actually finished. After all this time, it is finally complete. So we are gonna just do a little tour, I guess, is what we're gonna do. It's been a long time coming. As you know, I spent about 17 episodes making this and then some off-screen stuff because it just became that boring. All the details I know of so far are in place so honestly let's get into it i'm gonna begin at the right side of the western area which is i guess the entrance of the western area as well and it starts right here just before this bridge the welcome to the wild hot and cold drinks stall that is a mouthful but um here you go i guess i think i put a little bit too much effort into this tiny thing because it's pretty i mean it doesn't really matter that much it's just a stall but it does look nice i really like the coffee machine as well in particular i think that looks quite fun and of course there's um the tea for a hundred us dollars i think there's no problem with that whatsoever then here we have a lovely lovely tiny bridge and then here is the next stall it's really just something i thought could be fun as like an extra there's a bunch of different stores you can get like merch and food and that sort of stuff but i really like the idea to just you know walk around with a hat Seems fun, so there you have it. Quite a simple building, but I do actually like the way that looks. Then here in the middle, I actually didn't finish this last time, so there is um, there's a sign uh, pointing you in the right direction, depending on where you want to go. Obviously, this one is still empty because I don't actually know what's gonna be here, so that is quite lovely. Then here, the train. This, of course, was actually finished, I believe. I built this in a video, and I, I love it. This is just so great to me. I don't know. The, the roof, especially, is, is one of my favorite parts about it. It looks very rust. Oh. It looks very rusty, which I like. It's a nice vibe. Of course, behind it, there's the Grand Banyan <laughs> Experience True Adventure. The billboard, it's um, it's nice. It's a nice detail, I guess. It's nothing quite special, but it works and it does the job. So moving on. Moving into the actual area here, we have the saloon building, which actually is not even a saloon, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. It actually turned out to be more of a um, little grocery store, which is kind of random in a theme park. But you know what? We love it. It's dope as hell. Besides the building from the outside, I think looks very nice. This is, this may just be my favorite building here. I really like it. Then of course we go under the majestic bridge, if I do say so myself. I really like it actually. But anyway, the first actual ride you're going to enter is the teacups, which is teacups. It's, it's literally just teacups. But anyway, you move your way into this little queue line. You move all the way up here, up the stairs, and then here you actually get to the teacups themselves. Um, there's um, a woman just chilling there, operating the ride. It's nothing, nothing too crazy, really. It's just teacups. What can I say? It's <laughs> teacups. There's also a water tower on top for absolutely zero reason. And of course, here's the exit. So um, a little sign that says do not cross. Um, then you're here. If you go to the left, there is the slide, which leads all the way down there. That's something we're going to check out later. Honestly, this is kind of a useless area because it's really just, I mean, there's a coffee stall here. Um, some benches. This, I guess, is just more like a chill area because there's really nothing going on here. It's uh, it's quite boring, actually. On top here, however, there is, of course, the, um, the, the tow building, I guess, is what you could call it. It's really purely for aesthetics. There's no way to actually get up there apart from, you know, climbing the mountain, which I don't think people should do. But, you know, you get the idea. It's just um, aesthetics, just some nice scenery. Anyway, moving on, here we have the main kind of area of the western area. As you can see, this is looking nice. This entire building is completely new. That uh, You haven't seen that yet at all, like nothing whatsoever. So that is something really fun. Let's look at that right now, actually. If we go inside, this has to be my favorite interior in the entire park so far. I really, really 
like the way this looks. The ground is shiny as well, using some um, glass panels with opacity very high. Um, that looks quite nice. I like the way it shines and reflects, so that's cool. The reflection isn't actually technically accurate, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. Then behind here, we have the bar with all the bottles. I really like how the light turned out. It looked quite cool. Took some inspiration from some stuff I saw online, but um, this looks pretty nice in my opinion. Of course, there are also some, um, you know, paintings on the wall because why not? And of course, you can absolutely not miss this. Teachman actually pointed this out. Um, a piano, because of course, he... <laughs> what? what's a Western interior without a piano? That's that's unacceptable. Anyway, moving up the stairs here, there is a tiny painting, I guess, again. Um, and up here, there's a different seating area, which you can just kind of chill around and hang out and have your drinks. Effective and quite lovely. Basically, I just didn't really know what to do with them. Um, the top area of the building so i just thought you know what let's just make a seating area because why not around this there are some cacti and some trees which i like the way i i just love that anyway as you may have noticed i also spread these lights all over the place um which turn on during the night i'm gonna show that later they're off during the day because it's just that's just cool. Anyway, then here we have the first big ride. The first ride that actually took a tremendous amount of time to build. There's a sign, of course, talking about how this is just the most generic River Rapids ride ever. Don't read that, actually. The good, the splash, and the ugly. Inside, the queue is a bit basic, a bit plain, I guess. It's nothing too crazy, but if you move all the way down here, there are some cool pipes in the air here. On this, In the air. On the ceiling, which I guess is a nice touch. Um, it's kind of the sewer vibe, the sewer aesthetic, which later will be very, very much um, visible and apparent. Anyway, um, the classic station kind of thing here. The circular kind of rotating platform. I really love those, so I just needed to kind of at least give the idea. This one obviously doesn't actually rotate because that's not a thing in the game, but oh well. A for effort, <laughs> I suppose. I also put these operators all over the place to make sure that it looks like it's actually, you know, being operated. If you want to see the full ride experience, I'm not going to show that in this video because there's a separate video about that on this channel already. It's um, right right there somewhere in the corner. Definitely check that out afterwards, but we are going to run through this real quick. Obviously, the first room um, was this with the stars. I still like this. It's quite unique, although it's quite short, so you don't really have much time to actually appreciate it, especially if you're in the ride itself. It's just really it's just there and then you leave and then that's it. So, oh well. Then you move all the way up here and you actually go in this very simple, very basic kind of layout of some river rapids. It's quite simple. There are some nice details here with, of course, this lovely windmill thing. Wind, wind tower. I don't know. I guess it speaks for itself. I really like it, actually. It's, uh, it came out quite good. Anyway, in here, there are some, some waterfalls on the sides, but really, I don't really like the way these look, I guess. They're okay. And here, you actually enter the cave, like the mountain, in which there is a lovely little gold mine, which is fun, which doesn't actually translate into the name of the ride at all, but it's still nice to have. It's a nice addition, something that cannot be missing in a Western area. So it's nice that we have some of that. It's relatively simplistic, but still it looks pretty good to me. And of course, right here, there's the outside area with a bunch of these um, sprayers, which do spray once the ride actually arrives here. Moving on, this is actually the area that took incredibly long to build like this, I think has taken me the longest time. Especially these tunnels were just the biggest pain ever because it's really hard to actually make that align very nicely. But um, this room is one of my favorites of this ride. It looks very atmospheric, very dark, very creepy with the, the water falling and the, the lights and the creepy eyes in the tunnel. Nice, nice touch. So yeah, it's unfortunate you don't really see much of this during the ride itself. So it's nice that I can show it to you right now. Moving on, there's another tunnel. And then here is just a very simple storage room. I didn't really know what to do with this, so I thought, you know what, let's just put some boxes here and uh, there is that, so that's cool. Then here's the drop, the drop of the ride. It's not that big actually, but it's um, just a little something. In general, this room isn't anything too special. It's kind of plain. There's not too much going on, but it's fine. Besides, you go through this pretty fast, so oh well. Then here, you can actually see this now because uh, the boat has to actually activate it, but there is a giant croc here, which looks about like this.
And the rest of the ride is really just some simple sewer tunnels, which are the most basic thing ever. So as you can see, there's really nothing here anymore. It's just, and then you're back. Wow, it's magic, guys. It's magic. And then you just kind of go back out the same way you came in, and um, and that's it. That is the River Rapids. Definitely nice to have a really large dark ride area, because I don't really do that often. I feel like most of my rides are just outdoors. Yeah, this definitely has to be in my top three rides that I built. On the left here, there is a little fry stall, which I guess is nice if you want to have some, some food in between takes, you know. Um, some more benches, which I also spread all over. You can see them in some corners here and there. I feel like those really just kind of add some weight to the landscape makes it a bit less uncanny and empty and this right here is the slide i talked about earlier unfortunately you can't actually slide it because i'm lazy like that and that would have just been the most ginormous pain ever so um no thank you but for aesthetics it does look nice it's a nice nice touch nice addition so yeah the carousel in the middle here as you expected is nothing quite special either it's just a carousel with of course the that's a default one, actually. I tried recreating that on top of the operator stall, but I guess it's, I mean, it's kind of similar. So yeah, you enter on one side, exit on the other, and that's that's about it. Then this is the biggest new thing I added. This actually, nobody has seen this before. It's completely new. I wasn't actually even planning on doing this, but here we are. I've been wondering for a long time what I actually was gonna make on top of this mountain. Um, it started as a swing ride, I think, then it became like some really intense flat ride, but now it's actually a complete coaster. And I think this one looks weirdly good given the amount of time I spent on it. So let's go check it out. First, we have to move all the way up these bloody stairs. I did add a railing because it seemed a bit dangerous to just kind of, you know, walk out in the open and just yeet down any given second. But anyway, up here, as you can see, there is the wild mouse coaster. Now, as you know, wild mice coasters are usually just identical to each other they're very often the exact same layout in fact that layout actually exists in this game as well but i thought you know what let's make a custom one that has the same characteristics as the original wild mouse but just is a bit more unique and a bit more random as you can tell there's a bunch of these unbanked turns which is just really painful in real life but it's just how these are so i would say it's quite accurate um let's have a quick ride it's really nothing too special in fact i would say the ride experience is really bad but i that's just because of how the game is because actually it is quite accurate to how it would be in real life so it's just kind of the weird gray area of just doesn't come out as well as it would in real life so here we go So there you have it. It's um, it's nice, it's simple, it, it's effective, I guess. But most of all, I just like the way it looks from a third-person perspective. It's really funky. It fits well on the mountain. So I'm happy I actually built this because, you know, it's nice. Not to mention it has custom supports, of course. Same goes for the beginning area. This right here is just looking lovely to me. Some very simple scenery as well with a cart here and another mine cart. I like this. This is weirdly enough one of my favorite bits of this area. It's, it's, it's just fun, okay? It's fun. Let's um, commit suicide and drop all the way down and then here there is the big thing in this area the first actual coaster i think right pretty sure um the benyon express this name was partly chosen by you guys um the entrance is here which is a bit confusing but there's a little entrance sign so it's it should be fine um you guys i don't believe you have seen the on ride experience yet the station is actually a little bit generic but i like generic things apparently so it's fine we have some of these nice um steel thingies to make sure people don't um i don't even know what i was gonna say you get it let's wait for the train to arrive and get the hell in
I like it. It's nice and clean. Um, just a nice wooden-ish coaster, family coaster. So, um, mine train actually, but oh well, doesn't matter. Let's move on. Of course, you go out on this side and then you go here and then you are all the way back at where you began. Um, that is actually pretty much it, apart from there are some very simple houses here which is absolutely nothing special. These are very generic, actually, quite boring. There's this mountain, of course, which we haven't really seen in detail, but, I mean, there's not much to it. It's just a bunch of trees. So, yeah, there you have it. That is the daytime version of the western area. Now, that might make you wonder. Daytime, so there's a nighttime version as well. Yes, sir. I went out of my way to make this look as good as possible during nighttime as well. So let's go check it out. We are located again at the very entrance. As you can see from above, this is just looking so moody, so atmospheric, so nice. Exactly the type of vibe I was going for, I was hoping to get really. So there you go. Apart from the actual stalls themselves having lights inside, I also made a bunch of these lanterns, which I think came out pretty well. I like the kind of dim lighting. It's really subtle, which makes it even more atmospheric, I suppose. There's kind of a different design here which are round which kind of matches the round circular shape of the platform i thought that could be just kind of fun and then also i put a bunch of these hidden spotlights all over the place to light up the big important areas some of the walls are really nicely lit up also this green stuff here for some variety i thought could be fun some more lanterns here and overall the main kind of colors i went with are both orange like a warm orange tint and blue most of all in these mountains you can tell there's a bunch of blue light like all over the place right there and then also some orange spots to light up the mountain on other sides so that's kind of the idea i went for i think it all just looks very cozy especially the buildings just pop really really well i still can't get over how great this looks i love this so um yeah there you have it that is the western area even on top there there are some nice circular lights very nice and atmospheric apart from that not much changes of course it's still the same area but um it's nice nonetheless it's a nice detail to show i did forget this there's a tiny bridge here obviously that leads to the bathroom stall which is way too detailed because it's a bathroom why the hell would you make a bathroom stall detailed i don't know but i did it nonetheless i guess you can pee with luxury um that seems nice so anyway ladies and gentlemen that is the entirety of the western area i am very happy with it i am very happy that's finished because it's taken too long looking back at it it's a bit too large it's a bit like the area as a whole should not have been this big it covers too much ground and kind of doesn't leave too much space for other potential themes so i learned from that that's for sure i probably won't be doing this sort of stuff again because it's just too big it is nice to have in this park nonetheless because you know it just it looks majestic right it just looks so nice also during the day it looks like this it is very bright and very light um, like that. At first, when I showed you, it was sunrise, which I feel like makes it look a bit more romantic in a way, a bit warmer. I had it on 150 at first. That looks like this. See, it's just really nice and, and sunset-y. I want to thank you guys, especially for sticking around all this time, for being a part of this journey. You guys have had a lot of input in this. A bunch of ideas came from you guys, a bunch of names. I'm a big fan of how it turned out, once again. So, um... I suppose if you want to see more of this, make sure to subscribe. Leave your ideas down below in the comments, even though we're technically working on the underwater area and the alien area, but it's fine. Even for those, if you have ideas, let me know down below in the comments. And then I guess for today, that is it. If you liked this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell not to miss a single video. And then I hope I'll see you in the next episode of Building Benny's Movie Park 2. Bye-bye.